This video is dedicated to the residential construction workforce. Its intent is to help provide employees and employers with the tools to make the residential workplace productive and safe. This video is one in a series on residential construction. It provides examples of ways to meet safety requirements. In addition to the safety requirements reviewed in this video, there are many other safety-related requirements that employers must follow in order to provide a safe workplace for employees. For example, the construction employer is required to provide a safety program tailored to the operation and types of hazards involved, regular safety meetings to address safety and the needs of the job. Sometimes these are held in large group meetings, and sometimes they are tailgate or toolbox meetings. First aid training and kits. A portable first aid kit for transient or short duration jobs and personal protective equipment, or PPE, necessary to do the job safely. If you need help with these or any other matters related to workplace safety and health, or if you need a copy of the safety standards for construction work, please contact your local labor and industries office. This video outlines a number of code requirements and will show how to work safely during the siting phase of residential construction. The areas to be discussed are job prep, walk around safety inspection, setup and siting, ladder safety, safe access, scaffold safety, job completion, On-the-job safety is a joint effort and requires cooperation between employers and workers. Planning for safety will increase the efficiency and profitability of the job. Make sure you have your first aid kit, work order, and the site-specific fall protection work plans. Preparing for this job involves inspecting all your gear. Make sure your fall protection equipment is not damaged and all the components are there. Before you leave for the job site, have all the tools and equipment necessary to complete the job, whether you leave from the office or any other location. Upon arriving at the site, include as part of the walk around safety inspection the safe access to your work area including the location of trenches excavations construction debris tripping slipping hazards and interior fall hazards make sure to look for any unprotected openings in the roof look for the location of anchors review and complete the fall protection work plan identify the location of electrical panels and raceways Mark the location of electrical panels and raceways on the outside of the building to avoid nailing into them during installation. Look for fall hazards in the interior such as stairways, balconies, and wall openings. Stairways require temporary or permanent railings. If permanent anchors have been installed, check that they have been properly installed. This is one that is not properly installed. It is missing a lower block. Document the inspection and get any deficiencies corrected. If anchors have not been properly installed or if a permanent anchor is not available, installing a permanent or temporary anchor may be an option. There are many types of anchors available. Be sure to follow manufacturer's recommendations for installation. Before installing an anchor, consult with your supervisor and adjust your fall protection work plan accordingly. Coordinate any corrections with the appropriate person.
determine the best location for beginning the job and establishing a scrap pile. The fall protection work plan addresses the method of overhead protection for anyone in and around the area. Informing others on the site about the work being performed is necessary. Posting signs helps to warn others that could come into the area. Post signs if they have not been posted by other workers. When siting, make sure to use electrical cords and Y connectors in good condition. Eye protection. Guards on power saws that are operable and in good condition. Pneumatic nailer muzzle guards. Properly guarded compressor. A hard hat. And proper foot protection. Once the siding is completed as much as can safely be reached from the ground, it will now be necessary to construct scaffolding. This process usually requires access to the roof to attach safety lines and install scaffold brackets. Workers want to make sure to carefully plan how they are going to safely get to and from the roof. In many cases, a ladder in good condition and properly set up provides safe access. Ladder safety is one of the most important areas of siting safety. Setting up the ladder is the first step. Select the best location for placing the ladder. Be aware of soft ground areas, slippery surfaces, and overhead lines. Place the ladder in a location where it will help provide the safest access for the sider to safely tie off. Check the base of the ladder. The ladder base should be free of debris. The ladder must only be used on stable and level surfaces and not be placed on soft ground. The angle of the ladder should be a 1 to 4 ratio. The ladder is required to extend at least 3 feet above the working surface so the worker has something to grasp for balance while getting on and off the ladder. The areas at the top and bottom of the ladder must be kept clear of materials and debris. Secure the ladder to prevent movement or accidental displacement. There are different ways to secure the bottom of the ladder. One way is to drive stakes near the base of the ladder and secure the side rails to the stakes. Another way would be to dig holes for the base of the ladder. Some ladders are equipped with self-securing spikes. The top of the ladder must also be secure. The rungs of the ladder should be kept free of mud and oil to prevent slipping while climbing the ladder. This will also keep the roof free from mud and debris. When accessing the roof, go immediately to the anchor point and tie off. Attach additional safety lines that may be needed. Install the brackets according to manufacturer's recommendations. Rules for pump jack scaffolding are Scaffolds need to be designed by a qualified person and built and loaded to that design. Follow manufacturer's recommendations. Fall protection is required beginning at 10 feet but is recommended as soon as you get on the scaffold. Use an adequate firm foundation. Brace the top and bottom and where else required. There should be no more than two workers on the scaffold. 
use a dedicated safe access. Be sure that scaffold components are not overloaded. Ensure that the planks and workbench are secured. If wood pole scaffolding is used, the rules for wood pole pump jack scaffolding are the wood poles must be straight grained and free from large or loose knots or other defects that could impair the strength. Poles should be braced to structure every 10 feet vertically. When splices are used to make a pole, mending plates must be installed at all splices. If you're using anything other than manufactured planks, refer to the construction safety standards for allowable spans for scaffold planks. Be sure pump jack brackets are designed for use with wood poles. Be sure to follow manufacturer's recommendations. One of the options if anchors are not provided is to use guardrails or an approved net. Rules for ladder jack scaffolding are Platforms should be in good condition and at least 12 inches wide. The platform height is not to exceed 20 feet. Secure ladders at the top and bottom. Fall protection is required at 10 feet. Be sure not to overload the scaffold. It is recommended that only one person is allowed for each eight feet of platform span. Follow manufacturer's recommendations. Your choice of fall protection equipment is not limited to the equipment shown in this video. Alternative equipment is available from a variety of sources. Whatever equipment you use, always refer to the manufacturer's instructions for installation and proper use. Make sure to clean up the site before leaving. Inspect all the fall protection gear for any damage and store it in a protected container. This video has provided examples of how to work safely while working in residential siting. There are a number of ways to accomplish this. This video provided some examples. The video discussed job prep, walk around safety inspection, setup and siting, ladder safety, safe access, scaffold safety, job completion. If you have additional questions or need individual help, call your local L&I office. This video is a project of the Construction Advisory Committee, which is made up of representatives from Labor, Management, and the Department of Labor and Industries. The purpose of the CAC is to promote workplace safety and health in the construction field in Washington State.